Hello everyone. This is Prashant Mishra. This I'm making a second video on CNAP. This is a much shorter version, just focus on CNAP. In the other longer video, I also spoke about the cloud native application and how the architecture for the DevOps process, CI CD pipeline, and then how CNAP secures it. So if you're looking for a detailed uh, video then or, or the podcast, you can look at the other detailed video, but this is a shorter version, just focus on CNAP. So the reason I'm making a CNAP, this CNAP short video is because I've been hearing a lot about CNAP. Uh, by God's grace, I've been able to work on a technology for last few years. The terms of CNAP started getting popular in 2020. Okay? And before that, there were other terms like CWPP, CSPM also has been there for quite some time. And now there is evolution happening on the CIM side. So I thought I'll make a video to clarify some of these terms because Personally, I when I interact with a lot of solution architects, they are also confused with these terms. So CNAP, essentially it's a technology that secures cloud native application across the build, deploy and run phase. So as you know, applications that are cloud native, they use modern cloud native technologies like microservices, Docker, Kubernetes, container, they use DevOps based pipelines across public or private cloud. So it doesn't matter what kind of cloud uh, is used, cloud native applications and the protection around it is targeted irrespective of the environment um, where the application is hosted. The idea is to secure cloud native applications across build, deploy and run phase. Now as you can imagine, each of these phases could have cybersecurity related issues or threats. Example, while you're building, the cloud native apps and somebody writes a, a misconfigured template or writes a command that deploys a resource uh, that has open internet connection that can be caught using uh, CNAP platform. Okay, so that's a build part. Uh, also, if, if somebody uh, refers to a package uh, or an image that has known vulnerabilities, uh, that can be caught also using a CNAP. So across build, deploy and run, so entire DevOps process, uh, CNAP works to find security issues, okay? Now, <clears throat> this is uh, typically, as I said, this is about securing the DevOps uh, related process. So uh, now in DevOps, there is development happening and then there's operation. So build, deploy and run again, okay? So in the CNAP platform, what it does is it scans the artifacts, which is software, hardware, uh, not hardware, my apologies, software, workloads, and infrastructure on which the application is hosted. So that's artifact scanning. It scans the configuration of the underlying cloud, and then it performs runtime protection. So that's what CNAP does. Security across DevOps cycle, okay? If you go into details, artifact scanning includes SAS and DAS, API scanning, software composition analysis, also known as software bomb, Exposure scanning in terms of CV, secrets, sensitive data, malware, attack path analysis. Okay. Going on to cloud configuration, it would uh, look at infrastructure as a code scanning, not network configuration and security policies, cloud infrastructure entitlements management, Kubernetes security posture management, cloud security posture management. And then the third part, which is the runtime protection. So it looks into web API, uh, and web application protection, application monitoring, cloud workload protection, network segmentation, and also exposure in terms of CV, secret sensitive malware, attack path analysis, right? So you might be wondering why there's exposure scanning at build and as well as the run phase is because uh, as the platforms or applications run, there could be some runtime issues and exposures uh, getting exposed, okay? So again, CNAP is all about providing security across the entire DevOps cycle, okay? Now, what that also means is there has to be integrations, right? So what, how this technology works is it does integration, so it integrates with various uh, tools in the entire DevOps cycle, including infrastructure. So there are two methods uh, of integration. One is passive mode and the other is the active mode. Passive mode is essentially agentless, so which means there are APIs that are used, so what it does is it collects data with your cloud infrastructure providers. It can do that with across multiple clouds. So typical CNAP uh, platforms would support both private clouds as well as public cloud to understand 
what workloads are running, what are the virtual machines, uh, containers, uh, the Terraform templates or IEC templates looks into registries, repositories, uh, it integrates with IDs, okay, so it keeps collecting data and it essentially provides guard rates. Okay, now that's agentless. When the CNAP works in the agent base or inline mode, it intercepts and blocks communication uh, coming to the application because it is in, it, it is integrated at much deeper level and it can understand the kind of content that's coming to the application and then take action. Now, while there is data getting collected by the CNAP platform, so CNAP's platforms are continuously pulling data uh, right from the moment they are integrated for the first time to continuous uh, pulling. So they keep building baselines, they find outliers, uh, they compare the uh, data with known threat intelligence. It provides you interfaces for queries or hunting. And uh, as you can imagine, a lot of this is based on a policy engine. And these, these uh, policies uh, could detect issues in configuration, identity, uh, these and permissions. It can detect issues around network communications, etc. So machine learning is commonly used to build these baselines and find outliers. Also, uh, because of the policies, uh, there could be alerts and uh, this base prioritization is also used because it's very common uh, that uh, uh, there would be false positives and this this is true with any CNAP platforms or any other security monitoring platform and also because their number of alerts could be very high in the beginning and hence you need to prioritize based on the exposure based on the business context etc some CNAPs will also uh, support remediation using APIs so that depends on the integration and the underlying platform so example if I'm talking about AWS a CNAP will integrate with uh, AWS and pull account information, organization information, S3 bucket data, cloud trail data, watch guard, uh, watch duty logs, uh, uh, VPC flow logs, etc. etc. Okay. And all this data is integrated, correlated, uh, and uh, stitched together for detail. So, example, you know, if, if I talk about uh, see an application getting developed on AWS, typically the developer would put uh, the code in the git the code will be committed it will be built uh, then uh, often developers use multiple open source platforms to find vulnerabilities in the code in the build etc etc and they would use multiple such platforms to find issues across the build deploy and uh, run phase and any vulnerabilities that are found they are fixed any issues that are found they are fixed and the application is pushed to staging or production depending on the uh, life cycle of the application now uh, in the the Sina platforms also integrates with your serverless functions also it also integrates with cloud native uh, technologies like security hub and others that i mentioned and it uh, stitches data together and gives you uh, a correlated view of all the information now when when you have CNAP, all most of these open source tools will go away you get a single interface instead of multiple windows uh, or multiple tools uh, with data connected all together across the entire DevOps cycle and it makes your life very easy as an analyst or as an application owner to find cybersecurity related issues. Okay. Now the amazing part that CNAP does is beyond you know connecting and stitching the data together is that it helps you uh, to provide a unified console for uh, tracking security issues across multiple cloud infras. It's common that uh, some of the large organizations have multiple clouds depending on the skill set that they have, depending on application owner, features provided by the cloud uh, native uh, platforms. So uh, example, a company that I know has applications hosted in Azure and AWS and, uh, and GCP. Okay. Now uh, the cybersecurity team as well as the application owners wanted to have a single interface uh, for tracking all the security issues. So they uh, went for a CNAP and uh, now they are able to track all these issues that are uh, coming in their uh, DevOps cycle. Okay. Now moving on to the building blocks. So CNAP essentially is a collection of technologies which is CSPM, CWPP uh, uh, and CIM. Also KSPM and API discovery and uh, protection tools. So this 
these technologies started, uh, you know, way back in 2010, 2012, uh, CSP and CWP, etc. And now everything is getting converged uh, and known as CNAP. Okay, so CNAP is essentially a high-level umbrella under which multiple such uh, technologies or platforms exist. Now, each of these building blocks or, or technologies like CWP have a different scope of working. So CWP is focused on security issues in the workloads and IIC scripts. CSPN is focused on security issues in the infrastructure. So, and CIN is focused on in, in issues with identities and permissions. Now, uh, what I have seen is most people either start with uh, CSPN or they would go with entire uh, the shift left or DevSecOps part of it, consider, considering you know it's a best practice to start security early in the life cycle of application development. But uh, it completely up to the up to the end user who you know or applicationers how they want to begin. They can start with CWP use cases. They can start with CSPN use cases based on their requirements. Okay. Now CWPP is uh, as I said earlier focused on uh, the workloads whether uh, these workloads are running on public cloud, private clouds, whether they are in the form of virtual machines, containers, serverless uh, functions etc okay and they provide capabilities for scanning uh, artifacts as well as doing runtime protection so uh, whether it's workload vulnerability detection configuration segmentation integrity monitoring application controls anti malware capabilities secret scanning etc now it depends on oem to oem or cwp provider some of these functionalities are uh, by certain companies i've seen covered in the cspm part okay uh, on the uh, on on the deployment side most uh, end users of these platforms start with most in a passive way they want to learn uh, more about the infrastructure they want to see the impact of this deployment and then this once they have the basic functions in place they start moving to the next uh, functions where they can start blocking uh, capabilities in terms of uh, CSPN, CSPN is mostly focused on the configuration plane uh, or the control plane. Uh, CWP focus on the data plane, right? So it looks into your IAM configuration, network configuration, storage configuration, pass, etc., and uh, finds out issues. Okay? Uh, again, using the same logic, build baseline, find out liars uh, based on policy engine that's running. So they typically build a unified asset repository. They can look at configuration changes. They can look at compliance uh, use cases. Uh, they can also help you in instant response on the configuration side. Now, what I've noticed is some of the CSPM functionalities are, are done by a lot of cloud governance and also in some cases, SIM platforms. So we'll find sometimes an overlap of use cases that are covered by CSPM. And today CSPM is, is a commodity you know, because it's very commonly provided um, by most uh, platforms today. However, where the difference uh, starts, uh, uh, you know, starts to matter is when you have multi-cloud environment. Okay, in a, in a single cloud environment, CSPM is tip, CSPM like capabilities are provided by mostly cloud native controls. Okay, on the CIM side, which is the third component, it's all about looking at the infrastructure entitlements. Uh, so it looks into resource entitlements, service entitlements, and management entitlements, which uh, looks into uh, per in permissions or entitlements across file shares, databases, workloads. On service side, it looks at virtual machine, container, uh, start stop permission, um, as well as permissions on compute storage and network side. On the management side, it looks into identities, rollback ac access control, etc. So what it does is it uh, builds a database of what current entitlements are and compares it with ongoing audit acti ongoing activity uh, by reading the audit or log data. So it compares the static data with dynamic user behavior data and gives you uh, issues that are there. So example, uh, there's a new account and it has multiple permissions available uh, and uh, try it is it is using only limited set of permissions or it's it is it has more access than it is uh, supposed to have okay so it helps you uh, with predictive and prescriptive analysis so it will tell you what's going to happen or what it is expecting 
because of the trends that are in, there in the infrastructure as well as uh, it will recommend uh, what needs to be done to rectify uh, such issues okay so this is done by cim cim is also provided by identity uh, platforms identity management platforms that are there for for some time for years actually decades to be honest uh, so there is an overlap there also however in the last uh, few years uh, dedicated cim platforms have started to come up okay now what should you do to learn more about cim and first understand cl how cloud native applications are working understand their architecture the cnap architecture uh, and uh, you have to also find out what are the native security controls that are provided by each uh, cloud native platform uh, understand what is provided by third party cnaps you spend around 10 to 12 hours at least to understand cnap as well as the uh, the cloud native uh, concepts and you'll be good okay and if there is a certification provided by you know, please go ahead and do it if you think that's necessary or approved by your management okay with that thank you so much and i'm really grateful for uh, all the contributors uh, from whom i've taken the content it includes aws medium blogs gartner cloud native computing foundation and also thankful uh, to you uh, for watching this content if you're looking for uh, more topic that you want me to break down easily in a simple language let us know uh, drop a comment uh, in this video i will be covering things like zero trust network access or zero trust uh, in details in the coming videos with that thank you so much i'll see you next time keep learning